Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In my hands I have Beagle Boards Beagle Bone AI64. This is an open source hardware single board computer by the Beagle Board the Foundation. Uh, it is their first ARM 64-bit device on the market. I'm super excited. I bought it from Farnell and in this video we're gonna do an unboxing and getting started. The video is divided into chapters and if you like my attitude and approach towards single boards computers and open source, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And speaking about hardware, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. For many years, PCBWay is well known for printed circuit board manufacturing, CNC and 3D printing services. Now they have a brand new offer, one-stop solution for your product. It is a full turnkey contract solution for manufacturing the whole product from the design to the final packaging. Now let's get back to BeagleBone AI64 and let's start with the unboxing. I bought BeagleBone AI64 from Farnell and it was delivered in a few days by UPS. As you can see, it is in a cardboard box. On the back of the box there is a label that this is manufactured by Seed Studio. So BeagleBoard Foundation is behind the design of this board but it has been manufactured by Seed Studio. There is an anti-static back and inside is BeagleBone AI64. Inside the box there is also a BeagleBone AI64 quick start guide. Now let's have a look at the technical specifications of the hardware of BeagleBone AI64. The first thing that attracted my attention was actually the enormous huge heatsink. Yes, this board uh, gets hot over time when you are using it and there is a very good heatsink to spread the heat. BeagleBone AI64 comes with an enormous number of GPIO pins, various interfaces and connectors. The most important connectors, at least in terms to turn on the board, are on one of the sides of BeagleBone AI64. We have USB super speed Type-C port with power input of 5 volts at 3 amperes. Next to it we have a 5 volt input power supply. After that we have mini display port and this port is used to connect uh, the board to a monitor. Please note that HDMI is not present on this board. BeagleBone AI64 offers two USB super speed type A host ports and also a gigabit Ethernet. There is something very interesting right next to the gigabit Ethernet port. This is a 60 pin microcontroller header. BeagleBone AI64 has integration of general purpose microcontroller unit with dual ARM Cortex R5F MCU subsystem. It's available for general purpose to use as two cores in lockstep intended to help customers achieve functional safety goals for their end products. There are three buttons. We have boot button, power button in the middle and a reset button. On the top front of the board, there is the famous Beagle Bone uh, headers with the compatibility for the so-called Cape Aron boards. The same headers are available on previous Beagle Bone models, including the famous Beagle Bone Black. Next to it, there is also M2 E key connector with PCI Express USB SDIO for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and other expansions. On the opposite side of the front of BeagleBone AI64, we have five user LEDs and one power LED. There's also a main domain serial port and a wake-up domain serial port. I have to note that the serial port is with pitch size of 1.27 millimeters for the pins, which is kind of inconvenient because typically on this type of boards, I'm used to have a 2.54 uh, millimeters a size between the pins. On the bottom of the board, below the heatsink, are the most interesting components. There is a DSI connector, also a couple of CSI connectors for attaching cameras. On the other side, on the back, there is a slot for a micro SD card. Also, there is a placeholder for a JTAG connector, which is not populated. Right next to it, there is a connector for a fan, 
So eventually you can have an active cooling of the board, not only using the heat sink, but also using a fan. As I have already mentioned, some of the most interesting parts and components of this board are below the heat sink. So the next step is to tear it down. Using a Phillips screwdriver, I'm going to remove the heatsink. The objective of this is just to see what's below the heatsink and to explore better the components on BeagleBone AI64. The heatsink is attached to the board using five screws. One of the screws is on the front side and the other four are on the back side. After removing the heatsink, we have exposure to see some of the most interesting components on this board. BeagleBone AI64 relies on Texas Instruments TDA4VM system on a chip. This is a 64-bit ARM SOC capable of running Linux. It is an ARM Cortex-A72 with DSP and Deep Learning Vision and Multimedia Accelerators. This single board computer has 4GB DDR4 RAM and 16GB onboard EMC flash storage. This is the internal storage which comes pre-installed with Debian Linux distribution. The whole RAM is provided as a single chip manufactured by Kingston. This is 4GB LP DDR4 RAM. Also, the board features 4KB EEPROM which is provided and connected to I2C bus 0. It holds the board information including board name, serial number and revision information. BeagleBone AI is quite huge as we have already seen. The dimensions are 10.2 by 8 cm. This makes it significantly larger compared to older versions of boards provided by Beagle Board Foundation such as Beagle Bone Black and Pocket Beagle. Beagle Board AI64 is also significantly larger compared to Raspberry Pi 4. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison between Beagle Bone AI64 and Raspberry Pi 4. Here is the moment to mention that BeagleBone AI64 is targeting slightly different market compared to Raspberry Pi 4. It is orientated more towards industrial use cases and users. So from another point of view, if we compare it to a popular in the industry devices such as the Toradex carrier boards, actually BeagleBone AI64 is not that large. Let's get it started with the software on this real beast. BeagleBoard Foundation is well known that they combine successfully free and open source software with open source hardware. And this is exactly the case for BeagleBone AI64. It comes with pre-installed Debian Linux image on the internal memory. So as soon as you turn it on, Debian will launch. There are two ways how to get started and the leaflet helps us by explaining them. The first one is to use a keyboard, a mouse and a monitor. Unfortunately, I don't have a connector uh, for BeagleBone AI64 right now. The board does not support HDMI and I have only HDMI, HDMI cables around. So the second option is to use a tethering. It is possible to tether BeagleBone AI64 to your computer using a USB-C cable. And this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to connect BeagleBone AI64 in a tethering mode to my personal computer. However, my laptop is not providing enough power to turn on BeagleBone AI64. Therefore, I'll be also using a meanwhile 5 volt power supply capable of outputting 4 amps of current. This is more than enough because according to the datasheet, BeagleBone AI64 requires up to 3 amps. Although all I need for the tethering is the USB-C cable, I'm also going to plug an Ethernet cable into the port. Later on, I'll be using it to connect to BeagleBone AI using SSH and VNC through my local area network. BeagleBone AI will boot and it will present itself as a mass storage device on the personal computer. The mass storage device offers some additional files how to get started. You can open start HTM with your web browser. 
Using the USB-C cable, BugleBone AI64 not only presents itself as a mass storage device to your personal computer, but it also sets up a local area network. And inside the, uh, the web page, you can find the IP address of BeagleBone AI64 and access it via SSH. This is exactly what I'm doing on the Ubuntu on my laptop. I'm opening a web browser and via SSH, I'm logging remotely to BeagleBone AI64. Out of the box, BeagleBone AI64 comes with Debian Boost I XFCE. This is the uh, graphical user interface and the window manager. This is installed on the internal memory. The Linux kernel version is 5.10. Over the time, BeagleBoard Foundation is providing newer Debian images for this board and the other boards that they have manufactured previously. You can install newer versions from the microSD card. There is a procedure either how to boot it from a microSD card or how to flash an image from the microSD card to the internal memory of BeagleBone AI64. I'm having a quick look at the CPU and memory information. Once again, I repeat that BeagleBone AI64 is the first BeagleBone with 64-bit ARM system on a chip from Texas Instruments. The Debian Linux distribution provided out of the box with BeagleBone AI64 comes with graphical user environment. Unfortunately, due to the lack of an appropriate cable, I cannot connect directly right now the BeagleBone AI64 to my monitor. However, there is an alternative and this is to access it remotely using the protocol VNC. VNC stands for Virtual Network Computing and it is a graphical desktop sharing system which allows you to remotely connect to various computers. To enable VNC, the first step is to log in via SSH to BeagleBone AI64 and to actually install a VNC server. In this example, I'm installing Tight VNC server. The installation is straightforward because it is available as a standard Debian package. Following the successful installation, we need to launch the VNC server. And then, using a VNC client from the computer, we can connect to BeagleBone AI64 via VNC. BeagleBone AI64 is connected to my local area network. If you remember during the wiring, I plugged the Ethernet cable for this purpose. I have already installed the VNC server on BeagleBone AI64 and now from my personal computer, I can launch VNC Viewer or another VNC client application and using the IP address of BeagleBone AI64 to access the graphical user interface. A quick check in the menus shows us that we are running the XFCE desktop environment, the device is BeagleBone, we are running Debian Linux 11 just as we have seen using it um, over SSH, the operating system type is 64-bit and the version of the desktop environment is 4.16. Furthermore, there are 4 GB of RAM memory. So far we have seen the hardware, we have seen the software and I would like to highlight that BeagleBone AI64 combines free and open source software with open source hardware. In June 2022, the Open Source Hardware Association certified BeagleBone AI64 as a truly open source hardware product from the United States. BeagleBoard is maintaining a Git repository where you can find all files and schematics. The printed circuit board has been designed with Ego, which unfortunately is not open source itself. In future, I would like to see a design based on KiCad. The open source hardware nature of BeagleBone AI64 is a major benefit. It allows you to modify, study, make and even sell BeagleBone AI64 on your own. It is also possible to modify it and embed it in an industrial application especially for your needs. BeagleBorn AI64 is a great device. Furthermore, it's open source, but I'm pretty sure that you are all interested in a very important question. What is the price? BeagleBorn AI64 is available through several distributors, Farnell, OKDo, DigiKey and Mauser. I personally bought this unit from Farnell and it's available at Mauser and the other distributors for 189 US dollars. 
I have to say that it is a brand new product and it's still hard to find it, so keep an eye on the distributors when it's available in stock. This is the final chapter of the video and it's time for conclusions. Let's start with the advantages of BeagleBone AI64. The first advantage is that this is a 64-bit ARM single board computer. Actually, this is the first device by the Beagle Board Foundation on the market that is 64-bit. The second advantage is actually a major advantage for me. This is a truly open source hardware product certified by the Open Source Hardware Association. All schematics are available so you can modify it and you can even make it on your own. The second advantage is that it comes with Debian Linux pre-installed because it has internal memory. Another advantage is the huge number of GPI opens which allow you to control a lot of devices specifically for artificial intelligence and machine learning applications. Let's talk about the disadvantages because there are some. The first disadvantage is that there is no HDMI connector on it and as you have seen uh, in the video if you don't have appropriate cable this creates some trouble to get started with it. The second disadvantage is the huge size. Well this device is significantly larger compared to Raspberry Pi 4 and it's quite bulky. The heatsink is quite big. It does a good job because uh, this board uh, gets hot over time but yet it's a big device. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.